association with box row, Mr. Francis Warren. Francis, you've seen a lot of boxing in your time. Obviously, yeah. Well, I mean, through you, you know, obviously as a kid with your dad, etc. Where does this rank in terms of like fight week build-ups and excitement? Well. I think the last time my dad was at Wembley, I was only 11, so, you know, I've definitely enjoyed this one more. Um, you know, we've done stadium shows over the last sort of, 10, 15 years, um, but this definitely is, you know, it's got, the, it's got that big, big, big fight week feel um, because it's the biggest star in, you know, in, in boxing. You know, you've got two guys at the, 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 the head of world boxing. It's, it's Tyson Fury and Canelo, and, and this is Tyson Fury's week. Um, and it's got that feel about it, you know, everyone's excited, you can feel the air of electricity around this room, and, um, you know, everyone just can't wait to see the big man. How, how much pressure have you been under trying to make sure everything runs smoothly, because 94,000 people, all the media week events, it's a lot of pressure to, to get right, because the eyes of the world are on you guys, aren't they? Absolutely, so let's hope we've got it right. <laughs> Listen, we've got, we've got a great team, and uh, everyone's worked their socks off. And um, I'm 99% you know, sure that everyone will be smooth, you know, very smooth running. We have a great event. We've got some surprises up our sleeve for, for the entertainment side of things. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good week, good, and especially a good night. You know, with Dillian being quiet earlier in the, in the build-up, do you reckon that kind of worked for you guys? Because the suspense of him speaking and obviously doing something for this build-up, more fans have been more intrigued to obviously hear from him. Listen, it's it's. You, you, you know, it, it adds to the story, doesn't it? You know, this, that, that's part of this fight, this, you know, this fight and this show's story, that, that, that the, um, the guy in the other corner didn't say a word until a week before. Um, and, you know, you look back and it'll be one of those unusual stories that get told in boxing folklore. And of course, So, yeah, I mean, it adds to the, to, the, to, the, to the allure of the event. It adds to the, the anticipation of seeing Dillian this week. Um, I know that his interview was very well received yesterday. And, um, you know, Buncey got very animated with him and it was, it was a great interview. Um, in Dillian's word, he's predicting was it maximum violence on Saturday night, and I think that you know the best Dillian. We want to see the best Dillian White on Saturday night because I think anything less than the best Dillian White results in a Tyson Fury, you know, an easier night for Tyson. Dillian's got to be a hundred and billion percent, you know, ready to go. So no Tyson is, and um, and I know that the ninety-four thousand people in there and the you know. That, you know, everyone on pay-per-view wants to see the best fight possible. 100%. And is Dillian 100% turning up today? Is there any risk that he may not? Today? Um, we'll see about today. <laughs> Um, also wanted to ask you the undercard. Obviously, there was a bit of you know back and forth with like promoters and fans, etc. But ultimately, the fights are 50-50 fights. Are they all still going ahead as planned? Yep, all going ahead as planned at the moment. Um, listen, they are 50-50 fights. You know, Anthony Kikachi is, just, is someone that we want to build up and give him that profile by fighting on this event. And Jonathan Romero is a former world champion. He's tough as they come, and he'll be coming. You know, he's coming to make a name for himself. Um, Ball and Lowe's a great, great, great little pick and fight that, you know, that I think that Nick Ball wants to make a name for himself and Isaac wants to bounce back from a disappointing night out last time. And then we've got, you know, three of our future stars on the on the card, you know, uh, David Adelaide, Carol Otoma and Royston Barney Smith all looking to make a name for themselves and, and participate in a night that they'll, ne they'll never forget. You know, it, you know, it'd be great to have you know, four world title fights on the card, but it's just not feasible. At the end of the day, we put together a good undercard that supports what is a main, a main, an absolute mag, massive main event. And, um, you know, it's a mammoth show with, with huge talent on the undercard. And, um, you know, and I think as well, you know, no one criticises it. You know, they're, critic they're not just criticising us, they're criticising those fighters. So maybe they should think twice about, you know, put, you know, down, you know, put, you know putting guys down that just wanted to step up and be involved in a big event. Fair dues. Last question, Eddie, and he's, old, he's always got good things to say about yourself, saying he's got a decent relationship with himself. Um, is he welcome to the show? Are you going to sort him a pass out or a ticket? I haven't heard from him. I haven't heard from him. So if you can get Eddie to contact Francis Warren, he's got a ticket waiting They're for They're all gone, mate. They're all gone now. <laughs> On that note, Francis, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Take care.